Learn XTD. Essential Terminal Commands. What's up, big dogs, little dogs, and everything in between? Linux masters and, and fucking wizards of technology. Here I am with a video showing you some essential Linux commands. As a beginner, you're gonna have to contend with the terminal at one point or another, as intimidating as it may seem. And so I'm here to hold your hand and guide you on this journey. So let me just get right into the um, meat and potatoes of this all. So as you can see, you have your terminal here, of course. And on the left, you'll see your user and you'll see your computer's name. So Lernix is my user. Lernix, yada di ya, fucking ya, is the computer's name. So a basic command is, and you've already learned this, I'm sure, before, I've heard of it, sudo. Sudo just means super user do. It means you're doing something with elevated privileges. And you might be asking, why can't you just do every single command without using sudo? Well, the thing is, on computers, you got some nitty gritty files, you got some sensitive stuff, you got some files you're not really supposed to touch all the time. Not meant to be in the user space necessarily, 24 seven. And sudo is just meant to be um, kind of a dividing process between, hey, you're kind of touching something that is very vital to the system, or hey, you're not really supposed to touch that. Um, you know, usually when you're just using your computer as normal. So for example, if I wanted to use sudo in a command, I would use sudo echo I love women. And then it prompts me for my password for the current user that I'm on. And then I'd be like, okay, here's my password. And it echoes it back to me. Another command to keep in mind is man. Man, oh man. Man is short for manual, as in, I need to learn something and I'm stupid so I need to read the fucking manual. Man, what manual page do you want, it asks. So you can actually man man. Man is something that you can run before a command or before even like a certain processes. For example, if I don't know what the fuck sudo is, I would do man sudo. And then it'll tell me everything there is to know about sudo. And I mean everything. It gives me paragraphs. It's like the fucking Bible. We got holy scripture at, at the at our fingertips here. So this is this is indelible knowledge that you should take advantage of, of course. Here are some basic things to know. If you want to clear your terminal, then you just do clear. That's it. If you got too many commands in your terminal or you got a bunch of bullshit, what is all this bullshit? What is all this? Clear. Think of it like you're go you're gonna resurrect a, a victim of cardiac arrest. Clear. Bzz. There you go. Another uh, simple thing to know is that if you're running a process, for example, if I'm running, let's say sudo ping gnu.org. By the way, that's another command. Ping. I'm just pinging a website. It's going to ping that website indefinitely and give me info about packets, the IP, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it's gonna do it indefinitely. If you do control plus C you will terminate the current process that is happening in that terminal instance. So I activated the ping and then I control C and it's done, it's out. This is useful if you don't know how to shut something down, control C just shuts it down immediately, which is epic. Let's use our clear again, clear. Here's the last very basic command is history. It gives you a history of all the commands that you've used thus far in a very neat, tidy little list that you can scroll through to your heart's content. Now let's get into one category of commands that I like to call file commands because these commands concern the uh, Linux file system, file management, and everything to do with fucking around with directories and little files. CD stands for change directory. That's as simple as it can get. Now obviously the first directory in your system is your root directory, which is just a backslash. Bam, I just went into the root directory. Now, if I want to go to my home, you do cd tilde slash dot slash, that's it. Now I'm home. Home will always be in tilde slash dot slash. Your home is where all of your personal uh, files are stored, like downloads, documents, etc. So very useful. When you do cd by itself, it'll automatically take you back to the root no matter where you are. So if I go to cd slash home, and I'm at slash home now, as it says, if I do CD again, I'm going to immediately be taken back to the root. Now, you might be asking yourself, what if I don't want to go to the root every single time I do CD and I want to go to the directory right above the one I'm in? Well, you can do that as well with CD dot dot. So, for example, what if I want to go to CD slash home slash Lernix? But then all of a sudden, fuck, I went too far. By the way, if you want to see what directory you're in, PWD means print working directory. PWD. I am in slash home slash Lernix. Very useful. 
Now, what if I want to go to home, but I don't want to have to type the whole thing over again because I went too far and now I'm stuck in Learnix land. If I do CD and then dot dot, it'll take me to just home. And then I do print working directory to see where I'm at. And lo and behold, I'm home. If I want to go to the directory behind home, then I can just do CD dot dot and it'll take me behind home, which is root. Another file management command that you're going to want to capitalize on is LS. LS just stands for list, and it's just listing all of the files in the directory that you're in right now. Let's use a combination of all of these amazing commands that we've learned thus far to get some context as to what the fuck is happening. Where am I? Print working directory to see where I'm at. I'm at the root. Now if I do LS, I'm going to list the files and directories that are inside of the root. Splendid, right? But there's an argument that you can apply to LS called LS-A. LS-A lists hidden files, secret sneaky little conniving fucks that want to hide from you. So there are some hidden directories that are prefixed with a dot or a period, however you want to call it. Now I'm at home. Print working directory and as you can see, I'm at home. If I do list, it's going to list all of these files that are in Linux. However, there are some sneaky little bad actors that want to hide from you because of your magical Linux powers. In order to get those guys, use the argument A and it'll list all hidden files. As you can see, what is this? There's a dot, a dot in the beginning of this file, dot in the beginning of this and this and this. Now you might be asking yourself, why are there so many concealed little files hiding around? Well, usually they're files that you're not really gonna need to mess with or they're files that are for a very specific stringent configuration and like I said, you're not gonna mess with them all the time. However, you can just remove the dot from a file if you really need to, but I'd suggest not if it has a dot in front of it already, as there are some commands and processes that require that these stay with their little dot. So whenever you want to see these hidden files, just do ls-a and you'll reveal all these weird little sneaky fucks. Another argument for ls is ls-r. ls-r gives a list of every single directory and file in every directory. And what I mean by this is that ls-r stands for recursive. I like to call it, holy shit, it's gonna show everything because that's exactly what it does. I'm in my home directory right now. And so my home directory has these folders. If I do dash r, it shows every single file and directory that is inside of these other directories. This is useful if you want to scrape to the absolute max every single folder that is in the directory that you're currently in. Another command that could potentially be dangerous if you don't know how to use it correctly, so keep your head on a fucking swivel, is RM, which stands for remove print working directory, I am in slash home slash learnings. If I do ls and I want to delete a file, what file would I delete? Let's delete the music folder. Now if I want to delete the music folder, all I have to do is RM and then I do music. There's another layer to this. RM has an argument called dash R. And what dash R does is basically it removes all of the directories inside of the folder that you're deleting and deletes all of the directories and files inside of those directories. So basically you are going to purge the ever living shit out of anything that is directed to with the argument dash R. Please use this with a huge amount of caution. A prevention measure, if you are a little bit on the slow side and you are prone to deleting your entire system, maybe this is why you're moving to Linux because you deleted system 32 and now this is your amelioration for such. Well, the trauma is not over yet. So use I command in order to prompt yourself whether or not you really want to. So for example, if I do remove and then dash R, which is recursive, then I do I with that, then I put music, which is the file I want to del uh, delete it's going to ask me if I want to remove it. Remove directory? It wouldn't have told me this if I didn't put I. By the way, you can group arguments together, R and I together, and it will give you something cohesive. Now, I can do my control C command in order to prevent this process from happening like I mentioned earlier. Control C, get that shit out of here. So remove is useful, and dash R will delete everything inside of the folder that you use it on. So do not play dirty with dash R because you will fucking die. Now, if you're a gangster, then use dash R by itself and practice a little bit of intelligence and rub two brain cells together in order to ascertain whether or not you need the folder that you're currently deleting. If you're not a gangster, then you're going to have to use dash RI to make sure that you don't accidentally brick your system. The next command is MV, which stands for move. You can move a folder or a file. Depends. So for example, let's go back home. 
change directory, tilde slash dot slash, which means home. And I'm home. Print working directory looks like home to me. Now, what if I want to move a folder inside of my home? Well, in order to know what I'm going to move, let's do list to list all the files. Now, I want to move the games folder into the music folder because I actually don't fucking know. What if I wanted to do that, all I would have to do is do MV, which stands for move, and then put games, and then I would put music, which moves the games folder into the music folder. Now, if I do LS, the games folder has miraculously disappeared like a fucking magic trick. Now, you might be asking yourself, but is it in the music folder? Yes, it is. If you remember the argument that I taught you not very long ago, then LS can have the argument dash R, which means it's going to list everything in everything in the directory that you're in. Now, let's see if the games folder is in the music folder. And what do you know? It's there. That's what the MV command does. It moves shit into other shit. As long as you're not typing the name of a directory or a file that currently exists, you can use MV to rename anything you want. I'm serious. So let's use LS to list what is in our current directory, which is the home directory. Let's think. What if I want to change the music directory into booty jams? Because that's what I like to call the music I listen to. Well, then all I would have to do is MV music and then I would just have to do booty jams. Now, here's something to remember. You cannot type it like this. You cannot type a space in plain text when you're doing a command. It does not work. And do you know why? Because it's going to treat booty and jams as two separate directories. So keep in mind, when you are typing a space in within a command, do a front slash and then a space. Then it'll interpret that as a space. So let's retype this so I can rename my music folder to booty jams. Booty front slash space jams and it'll be like oh there's a space i have renamed my music folder to booty jams if you do not believe me because that is fucking ridiculous i'm going to do list and it'll show booty jams the next command is copy or cp not to be confused with cheese pizza or another derivative of that abbreviation that is highly illegal let's say and i used ls to list what is in my home directory i want to copy booty jams to public because I want all of my booty jams to be shown to the entire world for whatever reason because I lack dignity and I am a disgusting exhibitionist. I can use CP and then booty jams and use tab to complete the uh, the title along with the space. Now here's the thing and I made a minor mistake here. CP also has an R argument which means recursive. Now I'm going to do a quick glance inside of booty jams here because we need to figure something out. If I do LS dash R which shows everything inside of every directory. Inside of Booty Jams, there's another directory called Games. Now, this is a problem because you cannot copy a single directory if there are others inside of it. So that means if I want my Booty Jams to be public and shown to the entire world because I'm amazing, I'm going to have to use the R argument in order to copy all of the directories inside of my Booty Jams. I'm going to do copy dash R. And then I'm going to put my booty jams and tab complete it as you should too. And then I'm going to put public. Now the dash R argument makes it so that it'll copy my booty jams and all of the folders inside of my booty jams. So I can get those lovely playlists in there as well, because everybody's got to indulge in my taste of music. Lo and behold, LS dash R list all of the files and directories in this current directory. And in public, my booty jams are there, heralded and revered for everyone to see. The next command is a very simple command, actually, so makes my work easier. It is make directory or MKDIR. Make McDur. Sounds like sounds like a rejected McDonald's item. McDur or make directory does exactly what it says on the tin. It makes a directory. So let's print working directory. I'm currently in slash home slash Lernix. Now let's do McDur. Let's make a directory called boobs because I am 12 years old. Now, if I were to LS list all the files in my directory right now, there it is. I made a directory called boobs. Now remember a directory is like a folder. You can go inside of it, unlike a file. That means I can actually CD into my boobs directory. If I wanted to have the experience of going inside of boobs while being a, a Linux user, this would be the only conceivable manner in which I would do that. Because as everyone knows, Linux users do not get game. And that's okay. 
because I just showed you how to get some semblance of what it feels like. With that in mind, allow me to show you the touch command. Now, this may sound very inappropriate and slightly topical considering that I was just uh, talking about boobs, but no, the touch command actually means to create a file in plain text. So for example, I'm going to do the command touch butt. I have made a file called butt. Now if I do list and list all of the files or end directories inside of the current directory I'm in, lo and behold, we have boobs and we have butt. As you can see, directories are listed in blue and files are listed in white. Wonderful. Now I as a Linux user can get that much closer to feeling the orifices of a woman's form. On to the next command, or it's a program more like, which is nano. Nano is a text editor, <laughs> that's it. Nano is most useful for editing configuration files because you gotta configure shit once in a while. So if I wanted to do nano-w, which is the argument for writing a file, and then I want to go into but, I have gone inside of a but. Now, what can I do in here? Well, whatever the fuck you want. Some basic controls for nano is that if I wanted to find a certain term, I do control W and then I type what I want to look for. And then control C also means to cancel just like I taught you earlier. So for example, I have love here and then I have hate. Now if I wanted to find love, I would do control W and then I would search for love. And look at it outlines love for me right there. Keep in mind, this is something that no Linux user will ever get in their lifetime. Now, if you want to save your nano file, all you got to do is control X and then it'll prompt you whether or not you want to save this file. And for no, Y for yes. Pretty rudimentary. I want to save this. And then it'll ask me the file name to write, still keeping it booty. And then press enter to write it and save it. The next command is one that I've already taught you and it's conditional really. It's just honestly used for one thing and that's tar files. The command is tar and dash xvf. This just means you are extracting a tarball or a tar file. Tar balls are basically just like zip files. You download them and then you extract them with tar xvf and then you put the tar file. So if I change the directory into downloads and then I do ls to list what is inside of downloads, well, I got a few tar files here ready to be extracted. So I will do tar dash xvf and then I will put bone cursor because I mean, two bone cursors is better than one. Yada, yada, yada. All of this is just showing in a verbose fashion all of the files that are contained within the extracted product. And if I do ls again, lo and behold, there's a directory called bone cursor. It created a folder with all of the extracted contents. Well, that was pr uh, pretty much all I had planned for this video. So, you know, if you learned a little something, then let me know. Hope I helped you out in your Linux journey. More videos to come. Appreciate you. Peace out, big dogs.